all these different things that he gave up. Because of this same period of time back in the biblical days before Christ got here, it still was going on. It was happening then before he got here. So it was just something that he picked up on that he went and did. But he had to bring it more clear for us to understand something. And it's the period of time, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, it's just when the time then he just got you getting baptized. When John just got you putting the water on him. Just when the dove got you landing on him. The time began. It tells me that he ended up going into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. Now as I started reading these things and started thinking about this and meditating, talking to God and started listening at my own self and looking back at my own life and started looking around in the world today about what's going on. And we are talking about a lot of fasting and praying and going on. I remember when I was a kid, it was a lot of fasting and praying going on with Grandma and Grandpa. All them old seasoned saints when they used to tell you to come on in here. It's noonday. It's time for us to pray. And we're talking around the time of Lent. We are talking about how they'll bring everybody in and stop doing everything they were doing. We used to holler about, we hungry. I want something to eat. They said, you're going to get something to eat after you finish this here, son. And it seemed like they would never stop praying. They went on so long, it seemed like when one stopped, the other one picked it up. I mean, they covered the whole world, the whole county, and everything else. And I'm talking about they really praying and talking to the Lord. We are talking about this is what you're supposed to have been doing. In these 40 days that you're supposed to have been doing, up until Holy Week, you supposed to have been on your bending knees talking to God and telling you anything, trying to get closer and closer with him and getting the strength and stuff that you need for this journey. Let me tell you, this is just a journey just for one, but it also is a group. You understand what I'm saying? I say you got to get it for yourself to give it to somebody else. If you ain't getting it for yourself, how can you give it to somebody else? A lot of times we're trying to tear down instead of building up. My God said, get down on your knees. Talk to me. I'm your first love. I'm the one you should be calling upon. And if I tell you it's all right, then you do it. If it ain't all right, I'll let you know. A lot of times we'll turn that ear to when he's saying something and telling us not to do it. We call it a conscience. But I call it just here, you know. You ain't get it? You know. Because you know it's wrong when you're doing it. That's the reason why God let me look at myself and he say, son, you used to come to me all the time and ask me, is this all right? Is, should I go this way or should I do it this way? You don't forget who started waking you up in the morning, who started you on your journey, who allowed you to walk the way you walk, who allowed you to talk the way you talk. Yeah, that old short man takes you, but I tell you one thing, I sent him behind you because I got a work for you to do. And you see, the devil had it like this here. He said, well, I don't think you amount to nothing. You ain't helping nobody. You ain't doing nothing for nobody. But let me tell you something, them old people that were down there praying Lent service and had me right down there along with them and praying right along with them, son, it's your time. That's how they say, son, it's your time. It's time for you to talk to the Lord now. Come on here. Talk to the Lord. I don't know how to pray. Say whatever God lay on your heart. Let it go. Ask for what you want, what you need. And then we start talking about it. He said, look here, don't ask, for the don't ask for the material things. You need to ask for these spiritual things. What you need to be asking God for. You see, I don't mind saying strengthen us where we are weak. Building us up where we're torn down. Oh, you wonder why? Because I tell you what. You say, I got on a whole arm of gun. Yeah, I got it on. But I tell you one thing. You turn around, half of your back plate is out. Because your front, you go, you, oh, I got the breastplate on. But what about the back? You know, see, I'm going to let you understand something. That's the reason why Jesus sent his disciples out by two by two. You see, he said in his word where there are two or three. You see, when you're praying together, guess what? 
he'll be in the midst. You can be a conqueror. Another thing I found out about my Lord and Savior, he told me one time, he said, you know, we all get sick every now and then. Well, we all get sick, and the first thing you want to do is call the elder of the church to come and pray for you. Call your pastor. Call this and call that. But he told me this. He said, I'm going to tell you this. I got you here by yourself. Now, who you going to call to pray? He said, you better start praying yourself. Then you better call the elder. Then you better call somebody else. You see, one thing I know, if you're a praying person and you don't got a relationship with God, I guarantee you, you can ask him whatever it is, and he will fulfill it, no matter what it is. See, one thing that I know, you better get yourself ready. If you're not ready, ask him to get you ready. Because I tell you one thing, I say, the Lord, prepare me that I be able to receive this blessing, that I be able to stand the wise of the devil, that I be able to walk the way you want me to walk, to talk the way you want me to talk. I want to be just like you. I said when you was on the mountain, you were talking to the devil. He put all kind of things before you. But one thing you know, you said that bread, oh bread, Ain't nothing but a material thing. But every word proceed out of the mouth of God is what it's all about. So you see, we don't got mixed up around here. We don't lie to the devil to come in and slide in and try to take away God's joy. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. God's joy. That's the reason why I ask you, what have you gave for up to him lately? You see, what have you gave? How long you been out on your knees? How long you talk to him? How long you just sit down and listen at him? Listen at the wind blow. Don't you know that's him talking to you? Don't you know when you see the trees rocking and shaking and bobbing? There ain't nothing but Jesus trying to get your attention, letting you know if you don't cry out, the trees cry out, the rocks will cry out. No matter what, you better listen up. Time is getting short. It might be a thousand years, but you won't be around for it. Because he done took that long Japanese away. Because the way you act, sometimes, whoo, I'm going to tell you, because all young people, and we are the same, we don't forget how to treat one another. You see, one thing I say, but it's love and mercy. And it's grace. And some people just say mercy and grace. I say love, mercy, and grace. The reason why that because Jesus ain't nothing but love. That's all he is. No matter where you turn it around, flip it, or why you do it, he ain't nothing but love. You can look at it, examine it all you want, he's nothing but love. Yeah, I mean, you must think about that part in saying that would you lay down your life for your wife, would you lay down your life for your mother, for your father, your children, your sisters, your brothers? You know we'll say yes, one, don't we? But will it really come down to it? What you gonna do? What is you gonna do? And you know how somebody gonna beat and treat you? Is you strong enough to stand? Many times that I've been under the knife and I have to go to the Lord and I say, Lord, you're going in with me, but you're going in there before me. I don't want you just going there with me. Go before me. Make sure everything's all right. I don't know what then happened in there, but I know you can take care of it. Came out of there, had the surgery and everything else, and had a little problem going on, had some kind of infection, got in the shoulder. Everything going on like that then. I was going back and forth. They said, oh, ain't nothing but a, a little a irritation and a little, uh, uh, what you call that, baby? Uh, uh, I was allergic to something, and, and it was just an allergy or whatever, and it was no allergy. Don't turn into an infection. My arm blew up like Popeye. I'm talking to God. I said, God, you know what this is. So you can take care of it. 